This is Thoughts Become Things. With each episode, we'll help you reach the highest creative potential that God has for you. With your host, a teacher, life coach, a dream coach, and motivational speaker, Jeremy Lopez. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the podcast of Thoughts Become Things. I'm Jeremy Lopez, and uh, excited, as always, to be with you guys today, and I hope everyone's doing great today. And I tell you, we've been having some great response recently from just people who are writing in for prophetic words. You know, as many of you know, I do prophetic words, which basically, I hear from God, because we all can hear from God, but but I have, uh, I'm not special by far, we're all special in God's kingdom, but I operate as a, as a prophetic minister, more of a prophet, and so I'm going to hear things I have all my life, I've heard things from people, uh, excuse me, from God a lot for people and and just you know I didn't ask for it but it's just how God's pre, uh, pre-programmed to me before the, I was in my mother's womb and so that's what I do for a living uh, you know people write in during the day you know give donations and I just say Lord I don't know them but what would you like to say to them and of course as you know we record them on audio send them out to the people and they're blessed I have so many people who have testified and said, man, my prophetic word was right on. You don't know me. You don't know my situation. And God just read my mail. So that's, that's an encouraging. So I want to encourage any of you that are listening to me that says never sort of, you know, done that. Hey, give it a shot. <laughs> that's what I say is give it a try. You know, go on the website, you know, give a donation, go to the website. And once again, we just get your name from, you know, the system. That's all we do. And, and I just, I just say, okay, here's Karen or Bob or Tom or Susan and just say, okay, Lord, what do you want to say to him? And I record it on a recorder and then, then we sip them, uh, we send them out uh, to your email and you can download the audio. So it's really cool. But I want to encourage anyone and everyone who actually has never heard a prophetic word to give it a try. You know, that's you know, in the, in the charismatic Pentecostal move, we believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe, and the Bible makes a plain, there's gifts of prophecy, gifts of healing. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of gifts here that certain people are anointed and called for. Plus, we have to remember in Ephesians chapter 4, the Bible says God has given us apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. God didn't cut two of them. God gave us all five of them. We have apostolic people today that establish churches, whether it whether it be charismatic, non-dominational, Pentecostal, you know, Methodist, you know, Baptist, no matter what, we have apostolic ministers that actually don't realize sometimes that they are apostolic, and they establish churches and establish ministries and stuff. We have prophets such as myself who, you know, we're just called by God to hear God and say, hey, you know, God's telling me to say this to our church or to an individual. That's what we do, right? Because we all hear from God, but once again, as like apostolic ministers have the special apostolic part of them that brings groundwork and ground laying and foundation. Prophets hear that like everyone else, but they hear a little bit more to bring confirmation to people, things they've never heard, you know, uh, before, to help give them direction, instruction. The Bible says that um, that gift of prophecy is edification, exhortation, and comfort. And so I, I do this, I do 20 to sometimes 30 words a day. I have for years, nonstop, every single day, for people all over the world, all over China. We have China, Taiwan, Canada, um, Mexico, uh, UK, Switzerland, Germany. You have all 50 states, as 51 50 states as well. We have all these, and so that's what I do for a living. That's that's my call. But I want to encourage you guys before I start the message today. If you've never done that, hey, give it a try. See what God would say to you. You know, we have to remember that we hear in part and prophesy in part. So I won't hear everything for you. I'm not supposed to. Your job is to hear. God for yourself, but guess what? Even within myself for my own personal life like you, I'm, you're not going to hear every single detail from God. You shouldn't because, because if that's the case, your life would be perfect. God would tell you every little jot and tittle that known to man that your life will consist of. But that takes away from our faith to seek and believe God on our own. But yet, prophets bring confirmation and bring instruction. And when people go through hard times, prophets can say, hey, I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord spoke to me and said, He's going to carry you through this rough patch. And all of a sudden, it's like, man, I know God God, you know, knew what I'm going through and, he, and he, he knows where I am. And sometimes it's good to know that God knows where we are. Sometimes God will call it details. Hey, I see somebody with COVID. I see somebody with the flu. I see somebody who lost their job. Oh my God, I just lost my job. This guy didn't even know that. You know, God's going to give you the education. In other words, God's going to bring you another job. So, so I want to encourage each one of you to do that. Even if I, if I know you or don't know you, doesn't matter. I don't rely on my flesh. I literally go before the Lord and I say, God, what do you want to say to this person? And I just record it. Because it's none of my business. It's not about me at all. It's about what God wants to say to you, right? Just like every joint supplies, what you do in the body of Christ, I can't do. Right, And so we all help supply the need of the kingdom of God. So I want to talk to you guys today just for a little bit about give yourself a test drive. 
<laughs> Give yourself a test drive. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. You know, a lot of times we are told in the church, the body of Christ, basically, you know, uh, don't trust yourself. You know, we're all sinners saved by grace, which we get that, right? We hear, you know, things such as the heart's deceitful. Well, we know the Bible says that, but we have to, I have to understand exactly what that means. It doesn't mean you're a deceitful, you know, horrible, rotten person. No. You're made in the image of God. So if you're made in the image and likeness of God, then God just was hypocrite. God was just double-minded. He's double, totally double-minded if that's the case. He's like, I'm good one moment, then I'm bad one moment. Well, make up your mind, God, what am I? Right? And so, and even in Genesis, when God made man, it says, and, and he, man said, uh, God said he was good. Well, am I good, God, or am I deceitful? Or, oh, horrible. Do you tell me? So a little, there's a little bit of double-mindedness there with God, if that's the case. But guess what? God is not double-minded. What it means is the, is the heart is deceitful, meaning that if you fully trust your heart only, and you don't trust the outward expressions of, in the, in the counsel of many, there's wisdom. You know, we have ministers, people around us, friends, you know, family members. We have those that we lean towards sometimes, not give our full energy to, but we lean towards sometimes to say, you know, hey, what are your thoughts about this, right? Because I'm feeling this in my heart. And that would, and that way you're either getting confirmation, you're getting validation, or you're getting like, you know, encouragement, or maybe, you know, I just don't feel like that's really right for you right now, you know, or I, I feel like the timing's wrong, you know? And so that way the heart can be able to, to understand and sort of leverage itself out by the, by the ideas or the, the wisdom from other people that God's given them. And so that's what it means. But for me to trust fully my heart and no one else or nothing else around me, that brings a deceitful mindset because I was never, and here Hear me closely, folks. I was never created to fully trust me. Think about that. I was, I was never, I was not created to fully trust me. Does that mean I can't trust me? Sure, I can. But it means I don't need to put all my, you know, the old saying, "Don't put all your eggs in one basket." Well, that's what it means. Is I don't need to trust fully myself in anything because God wills it to where God wants it. And wants me to connect with people of precious like faith, the Bible says. Precious like faith means I am called to connect with people. Feeling wisdom. Feeling empowerment. Feeling the knowledge. Feeling the, you know, the power of confirmation. Where two or more gathered in my name. God's even telling you right there, you know, that there's, when two or more gather, there's gotta be something magical and powerful and anointed happens when two people get together. He even talks about witnesses. You know, uh, let the, let this, this be a witness. So we know there's a witness means there's somebody else there to witness what happened. So when we see this, we have to look at the structure of understanding the body of Christ says what? How can the hand say that he, say to the arm, I have no need of you? Because the heart can be deceitful at times because it's also full of our own selfish desires. It doesn't mean you're, all your desires are selfish and bad and horrible because God said he will give you the desires of your heart. So here's where we look at that. We draw the line again and we say, well, God, which one is it? Are you double minded? Because you're saying now you want to give me the desires of my heart. But then you turn around and say the heart's deceitful. Well, that's sort of double minded. That, that, I mean, it's literally that that shows major instability about God. You're very unstable. If that's the case, God. Right. But God's not unstable. What it means here is that, yes, he wants to give you the desires of your heart. He loves your heart and you should love your heart. But what he's saying is, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't fully trust yourself in major decisions and things of your life because I've given you people. I've given you people you can draw from and throw ideas to. That way the heart can remain, you know, at the heart. And knowing that the heart sometimes can be at that place where it can be full of ego. It can be full of pride. It can be full of love. It can be full of grace. But it also can be full of hate. It can be full of jealousy, but it can also be full of mercy. And so you see all these different scenarios, all these different playouts that the heart can play out that we have got to be careful about, right? And knowing that, we've got to begin to look and understand the whole process of that's what it means that God is, is bringing to us to say. And that is don't fully trust the heart. Put some faith in other things as well. And by the way, the number one, the number one thing before you put people as confirmations is God. Ask God what God wants for, from His heart to maybe help align with your heart of what you're sensing and feeling or maybe to counteract what your heart is sensing and feeling. So that's why the heart can be deceitful. It doesn't say the heart is deceitful. It says the heart can be deceitful. 
Big difference. In the original language, it says it can. Because guess what? It can. But it can also be good. It can also be amazing. It can also be full of grace. It can also be full of mercy. It can be full of hate. So you have to be careful in that note. But that's what it actually means. So don't call yourself deceitful and hateful and rotten and, and, uh, and no good. No, you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, the Bible says. The Bible says in the Old Testament, you're the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed going in and blessed going out, the Bible says. You know, you are you are what God made you to be because God loves you, made in his image and likeness. So so you're good you are a good person. You are a good person. But you have tendencies to be bad as well. We all do, right? Paul said it perfectly. Paul said, The things I want to do, I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. And then he says, O wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from this body of flesh? And notice notice what he says, who should deliver me? I like this. Who should deliver me? So we could look at us and we could look at ourselves and say, I'm just wretched. What Paul was saying was not the fact I'm wretched. What he's saying is, you know, um, he says what? The things I do, I don't want to do. The things I, I don't want to do, I, you know, I find myself doing. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of flesh? What he's saying is, look, I, I could be wretched. But so who can pull this out of me to not be wretched? I want you to think about that. Hello, a oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of flesh? So guess what? Deliverance means you pull something out of you, right? I mean, if someone's demon possessed, you carry them through deliverance. Who shall deliver me? Which means I'm pulling the demon out of you, right? If the demon's out of you, you're no longer demon possessed. If you're, if you're wretched because you're, you're double minded, you're going through stuff, guess what? Doesn't mean you are wretched. It means you have wretchedness in you. You have wretched ways about you. But the good thing is there's deliverance. There's a pulling out out of that wretchedness out of you. So, because there's deliverance from the wretchedness. Are you with me? So, who should deliver me from this body of flesh? Well, guess what? You can be delivered, Paul. And you know you can. That's why you said it. Because there's wretched ways in you. You're not wretched, but you can be wretched if you remain in your wretchedness. But good news is, there's deliverance for you, Paul. And there's deliverance for all of us. So you have to know the difference between saying, I am this. Don't, that's why I never say, I am blank, being negative. I don't say anything like that about me. That is contrary to the Word of God. I might say, I've got wretched ways about me sometimes. Or, man, I shouldn't feel this way about the person. I shouldn't hate this person. That's showing right there, even within that sentence. Not that I say that, but even within that, sen- within that sentence, I'm saying to myself, I feel hatred in my heart. Doesn't mean I have or that I am. Right? So you have to know these, the, the lingo or the verbiage and the language of what God is saying in the Bible to where you won't put yourself down so much. So when we say, give yourself a test drive, what exactly does that mean? It means this. I'm glad you asked. It means, give yourself a test drive, meaning don't be afraid to test yourself out. The Bible says to test the spirits. And it doesn't always mean spirits being evil and bad and good. It means test the spirits, meaning test the atmosphere, test the energy of something. To give something a test drive to see actually if it is good or bad. See if it is damaging or see if it is, you know, uh, good, right? So what God's saying here in modern terminology is give it a test drive. Well, I'm not sure if I take this, you know, if I should do this or not. Give it a test drive, right? Isn't that what faith is? Faith is stepping out by faith, giving it a test drive. Because guess what? The righteous will fall seven times, but God shall deliver them out of them all. So guess what? The test drive of faith means you're going to fall. God said you're going to fall. No big deal, but I will deliver you out of them all. No problem. No sweat. Right? It's okay. So that's what it means. And so giving yourself a test drive means test your spirits. Test your atmosphere. Test what it is you're wanting to do. Give it a test run. Isn't that what we do when we, do, you know, we when we want to get a car? We say, "Can can I do a test drive?" I, you know, th- no dealer is going to say. Well, pretty much, we'll say no dealer. But a dealership would be would really frown or wonder if it's or look at it as suspicion if I go to a dealer and say, "I want to buy that car." The first thing they're going to ask me, "Well, do you want to test drive it first? Oh no, no, I'm just going to buy it. No big deal. Have you ever had one before? Nope, never had one day in my life. In fact, I've never even driven before, but you know, hey, I'll just, I'll buy that one. The dealer would say, uh, let's, let, let's talk for a moment. Can we do, you need a test drive. Do you have a license? You've never driven before? Or even if you have, have you driven one of our cars? And so even they'll push you to do a test drive. So testing your spirit, testing the spirits, testing 
testing the atmosphere, testing the energy of a situation is a good thing. It doesn't take away from your faith. It's basically saying, you know, try it, try it with your faith. Faith allows you to step out on the limb, right? But once you're out on the limb, you gotta, you gotta feel that limb, right? You gotta make sure that limb is sturdy, strong, and that can hold you, right? That's what it means to give a test drive. Give yourself a test drive. Test things out in your life. Don't be afraid to test things out. And here's the number one thing people say to me in life coaching. Well, what if I fall? What if I make a mistake? Well, tell your ego to shut up. <laughs> Are you with me? Tell your ego to shut up because your ego is the one talking at that moment because your ego is saying, I don't want to look bad. I could fall. And my, you know, what would happen to me? Well, I'll tell you what happened to me. You'll fall like humanity does every day and you pick yourself back up and you laugh it off. An egotistical person is a person who does not want to make a mistake. They don't want to fall. They don't want anything bad to happen because then it could make me look bad. People could think I'm a sinner. People could think, you know, I'm not not hearing God. Here's another one thing I hear people say. People could say, I'm not hearing from God because I fail. Folks, let me tell you something. I hear from God all the time, but I make mistakes all the time. Does it mean I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm perfect? No. Just because I hear God, God is not going to speak to me every single detail about my life to say, okay, turn left, go five feet, okay, hold on, turn back around, take two inches, back up one inch. He's not going to do that. He's basically going to say, ingest. He's going to say, go down the street, go to the, go to the store. But how would I get there? Go to the store. Okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to put in my GPS on my phone. I'm going to figure out what, what store I need to go to. And I'm going to, I'm going to be led by the Spirit, led by the GPS to get there. And I might make a wrong turn, but it's no big deal. Eventually, I'll get back on the right turn, back on the right road. So, so that's a key thing. Giving yourself a test drive, it causes your ego to shut up. And say, if I fall, no big deal. If I fail, no big deal. If I make a mistake, no biggie. It's life. But I'll tell you right now, one day, and not being egotistical when I say this, but one day you'll give yourself a pat on the back to say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that I am not afraid or ashamed to say, I have fallen 10 times, but I've actually taken 20 steps. And 10 of those steps succeeded for me, and 10 times I failed. I'd rather pat myself on the back for that than say, I've never in my life flown a plane. I've always been scared. I never left my state. I'm afraid. Well, I don't trust the government, so therefore I'm going to stay in my house. I'm going to, I'm going to put, you know, uh, I'm going to, the Y2K, I'm going to store stuff downstairs in case we get bombed tomorrow in my state. You know, oh, woe is me. Somebody's going to come and rob me. Woe is me. I better have my guns all around me. Well, that's fear talking. That's, that's fear or ego or something, but it's not God. Totally not God. I can tell you that right now, right? Because God doesn't want that for you. God wants you to, God, God says, God says, do not go by what you see or feel. Do not go by what you see or feel. Well, I can see what they're doing over here. Okay. Well, your problem is you're, you're sinning. <laughs> your problem is you're going by what, what God told you not to go by. Well, I can hear what they're saying on TV about this over here. Well, God told you not to go by that. So get back in God. Obey God. Get your eyes off the world. Because you're out of the will of God when you do that. Because God says, I don't care. Because things you see and you hear and you feel, all that is subject to change any moment at all. You know, so I don't, so when I hear these soothsayers, well, I don't trust what's going to happen right now in the world. The government, the old, that president, he going to, he going to turn us into this. You know, and you, you want somebody to say, oh my gosh, please, Lord, you know, uh, yeah, hey, well, help me, God, deliver me from these, the, from these people, <laughs> you know. Because that's not faith talking. And Paul never said anything to that crazy, you know, he never, Paul never contributed to conspiracy theories. Whack jobs. I mean, come on, folks. Paul, Peter, John, Mary, none of them can, you know, they never gave over to that kind of crazy thinking. Because they believed God. And they went to an island. If you got snake bit, he's still going. The prophet says, don't do this. You know, you get, you know, Paul, you know, you'll get put in shackles. Paul does it anyway. He's like, I got, I got faith. And nowadays, if somebody was to say, well, you know, they're going to put you in shackles. Oh, I'm not going to go. I'm, I'm going to bind that spirit. And, you know, and there's that conspiracy theory. You know, the, the, I told you there's government outside, government's out to get you. And you're like, so, and you're once about to say, I'm glad Paul didn't feel that way. Paul would have never gone to, to an island and preached the gospel if he felt that way. So guess who's in the wrong? Guess who's in fear? Guess who's out of the will of God? Guess who's against God's faith? You are. Hello? I don't mind calling it out. I have no problem calling it out because I want you to be full of faith and power of God. I want you to be able to be what God's called you to be. God says you're an overcomer. You're a champion. 
And nothing can separate you from the will of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. God is going to see to it that all things are turned around anyway for your good. He's got to have things to turn around, so that means He's going to use your falls, your mistakes, your step down a limb and it breaking. He's going to use all that for your good. If you don't do all that stuff, and you're going by what you see or feel, well, I'm not going to do this, you know, over here, then if, he, then if that's you, then he, can, he has nothing to use to turn around for your, for your good. Hello? He takes he takes the raunchy, the bad, the you know the twisted, the broken things, and turns them around for your good. If you dare, if you don't step on a limb by faith, he has nothing to use. So you're so you're truly operating and living in fear because there's nothing God can use to turn around for his for your good and for his glory. So I wanted to bring this message to you today to where you understand the power of God. You understand to give yourself a test drive and not be afraid to test the spirits and test the atmosphere and test the, the things around you because God wants you to. He wants you to. Right? This is the kingdom of God. And nowhere, folks, nowhere in the New Testament will you find the things, how some people operate in their thinking today. Because you know what? If things really are not as they seem right now, then you know what? I'm not oblivious and blinded to it, but I also won't give in to it either. I don't have to fight the system. The system is broken anyway in this world. It's going to fall and fail anyway. Plus, I'm not, I'm not even called to be part of this world. So who cares? Let it play out of what it's going to play out. All I know is the Word of God says this, No weapon formed against me can prosper. God says, Anybody that rises up against me shall fall. That's what the Bible says. Because God will protect me. Psalm 91 says, You know what? He'll put His angels in charge of me, lest I dash my foot against a stone. There's so many scriptures about God's protection over your life, and yet we refuse to trust God, and so we back ourselves up with conspiracy theories, guns, and everything else. And not that that's not, it's not wrong to do that, but yet it is wrong to move by fear and surround yourself by things that will uh, that 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 you are moving in fear on, not wisdom, fear, and 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 you're doing the very opposite of what God tells you to do in His Word. Either God protects you, or nobody protects you. Because I have news for you: if 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 someone's going to come and kill you or get you, there is no gun on this planet that can save your hide. There is no nothing, no belief that can save you. The only thing that can save you is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who promises you that He will He will see you to the day you die. That's God. That's God. So I want you to know today, give yourself a test drive. Don't be afraid to step out by faith. The Bible says when He comes back into the earth, will He find faith in the earth? One of my favorite scriptures. I love it. But as he's asking, will I find, when I come back to this planet, will I find you with faith? Or will I find you surrounded by theories and, and, and weapons and, and, and holsters and, you know, uh, pantries downstairs and never, never travel to the UK because you're scared you get bombed. Never move out to another state because somebody's going to rob you or, or, or you know, take you down. Um, no. Think, I want you guys to think about this. There is, not, there is not one verse in the entire New Testament that backs up those, those spirits of fear. Don't be fearful. I'm not saying don't protect yourself, but don't be fearful. My protection is from God. I'll tell you what you'll find in my house. You won't find any of that stuff in my house. My house is protected by the blood of Jesus. My house is protected by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. My house is surrounded by, by the angels of God who guarantees me He will protect me. And no matter what happens, if anything happens contrary to that, hey, guess what, folks? It's my time to go home. That's all I've got to say. I will, I will believe and trust my Heavenly Father to the day I die, and I will operate by a level of faith because God asked me and told me, will I find faith in you, Jeremy? Will I find faith in you? Or will I find you surrounded by natural things because you're scared, thinking if God fails me, I got back up. If God doesn't take care of me, it's okay, I got back up. I want to test myself to say, no, in Jesus' name, I'm not afraid to travel the world and, and, and go to places and see the spectacular seven wonders of the world. No, I'm not afraid to step out and get a new job. No, I'm not afraid to move from state to state. No, I'm not afraid to be able to buy a new car when God tells me to. No, I'm not afraid to invest money when God tells me to. No, I'm not afraid. 
to do anything because the Bible says I can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. Anything I'm called to do, God says I'll give you the strength to do it. And I'll give you the desires of your heart. See, I can go on and on and on and on and on with scriptures. But the other things of those other th- natures we talked about, there's zero scriptures in the New Testament to back those up. Nothing. But God loves you so much. He says, trust me. Lean not your own understanding. Your understanding is going to fail you. And the understanding of the world, it's going to, it's going to go haywire anyway. Trust me. Lean to me. Look up and know your redemption draws nigh. I'm the one that brings redemption and protection and safety. So don't be afraid to step out and trust God. That's what God is saying. Give yourself a test drive today. Know yourself. And test yourself to say, how do I operate? By faith or by fear? Because I guarantee you that will be with you and your life will be, will be guided by either one or the other. And you'll look back in your life and say, like the, like the man with the talents, well, Lord, I buried that talent because I was afraid, God. I was afraid somebody could get it. Then it's not like a good conspiracy theory. I was afraid somebody would get it. They'd rob it. They'd take it from me. See, even back then, God was, God was condemning conspiracy theory people. <laughs> Are you with me, folks? And yet he's like, okay, well, guess what? You're cursed. You know, the guy, the guy who wanted to invest it, he didn't say, how's everything going over here? Who's in charge here? Pharaoh? Uh, Caesar? Uh, uh, you know, Obama? Trump? Who, who, who's, who's in charge over here? Oh, is it that time to invest right now? No, the Bible says he took his talent, he invested it because he wanted to be able to make the master productivity, multiplication. Nowhere do we read where that guy was like, well, let me just make sure. Are you with me? And he was the one that was blessed. And it never even says the man even probably made anything to bring more multi- uh, multiplication to that seed, to that talent. But he got blessed anyway. That's the moral of the story. He was blessed anyway because his mindset was, I'm not afraid. I'm an investing. I want, I want my master to be able to, you know, my leader or the boss, whatever you call I want him to make more from what this talent, you know, he's given me. And God blessed him. Not based on how much it produced, even if, even if it it did produce. No, he blessed him according to his heart that was not afraid. He gave himself a test drive and said, let's see what I can do with this talent God's given me. These are things I want you to know today. Listen closely. Read the word of God, not based on people and governments and the system. Read it as if it's the first time you've ever read it and ask Jesus, ask the Lord, show me. You know, show me what it, how I'm supposed to live according to how you live and how your apostles live. And then here's another thing on, on with the law, law of attraction. You talking about attraction? You will attract so many things in your life. Faith is the attracting factor. It causes you to attract everything you could ever dream or imagine because faith is the magnet that draws things into your world. Fear, guess what? Re- repels them. Fear repels everything and draws more of the same fear within it. Are you with me? These are things you have to remember, folks. As I close today, I want to tell you this. Don't forget to tune in Monday mornings at 10 a.m. Central Time on Instagram's Identity Network page and Facebook's page as well at 10 a.m. Central Time because I want you to be able to join our lives. I do a small teaching. We have a blast doing that. So join in today with us. I would love to see each one of you there present with me on Mondays as I begin to bring forth a teaching from one of my books or just something God's put on my heart that day. I would love for you guys to be part of that with me. So do that today. And as I close, I always close with this. If you don't like your day, I have dynamic news for you. You can change it. You know how you change it? Change your thoughts. Change your thoughts of how you see yourself, your world, your life, those around you. Change your thoughts and your entire existence will change. God bless you. This has been the Thoughts Become Things podcast with Jeremy Lopez, helping you reach your highest creative potential that God has for you. For more episodes, products, and information on Jeremy, visit www.identitynetwork.net.